Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here back in the aquarium lab with a brand new plant profile. Now you may notice that there's some filmmaking changes that are starting to take place on the channel. Um, mainly you can see me and some other things around me. So I'd really appreciate it if you could watch this video all the way through if you have the time and let me know what you think about them. I know the audio is not perfect out here, but I'm working on it. Today, we're taking a closer look at Echinodorus quadricostatus. You may know it as the broadleaf chainsword or just by chainsword. Now, sword taxonomy can get a little confusing, especially with these smaller varieties that seem to have multiple subspecies and genetic variants. It's apparent that there are two main species of chain swords that are the most popular and more importantly, commonly available to the aquarist. The two species are Quadricostatus that I just mentioned and Tenilus, which is also called the dwarf or pygmy or narrow leaf chain sword. These two plants can look extremely similar when they're small and are often mixed up with one another. When I first got this plant in, I wasn't even 100% sure if what I got was the broadleaf, which is what I ordered. After a few weeks of observing the plant in a couple different tanks, I can now confidently say that what I ended up with was the broadleaf chainsword. The narrow leaf species Tenilus tends to be more like a grass under the right conditions, varying in height, but shouldn't get much taller than four inches or so. Now this is not an uncommon phenomenon when it comes to aquarium plants, and sometimes we're just left not knowing exactly what we have in our tanks. It's these subtle differences in both morphology, especially common names, that makes buying something specific a little challenging, especially over the internet. You might buy what you think is a narrow leaf chain sword and end up with something different that ends up not working with your scape. This is something to always be aware of. It's just one of those things that you sometimes can't avoid and just have to roll with. Fortunately, the difference between these two species isn't massive, they're not polar opposites by any means once they start to grow out, but under certain conditions, you could very easily end up with something that you're not expecting. This can be part of the fun when it comes to aquarium plants, but it can also be really frustrating. I put a few links down in the description to Tropica's website where you can check out some great pictures of both of these plants and examples of them in different aquascapes. If you guys haven't checked out Tropica's site before, it's a great source of a ton of really detailed info and especially inspiration for new tanks. I often head over there before I set up a new tank to try and learn something new about some plants that I haven't used before. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking, what about micro swords? Now these quote unquote swords actually aren't closely related or really related at all to the swords that we're talking about today. It turns out that micro swords aren't even swords at all. They belong to a completely different family of macrophytes, despite having a common name that would suggest otherwise. The most common sword plants have to be the giant Amazon swords. I'm sure you guys have all seen these before and probably had them in your tanks at one point or the other. They're pretty popular. There are more than a few different types, which vary tremendously in leaf morphology and of course color, but in general, they're all really big plants and you definitely need a big tank if you want them to work well in your aquascape long term. Back in the day, I used to have a 55 five gallon with a big old Amazon sword that started out as a little guy with only a couple, probably three inch leaves, and it turned out to be a monster that took up the entire right side of the tank, front to back, top to bottom. Today, we're gonna be focusing on these smaller, propagate crazy swords that when taken advantage of, can really fill out a carpet in a nice medium to large size tank. Originating from parts of South and Central America, and now found growing in a few Southern states here in the US, chain swords are found naturally in slow moving estuaries where plants can propagate their way to shallow areas where they can then easily flower and reproduce once they reach that immersed growth phase. These chain swords, like all true swords, have what's called a rosette morphology, meaning that the leaves originate from a central point. Broadleaf chain swords are going to grow out leaves anywhere from six to 12 inches in length when fully grown. Of course, lighting and other water parameters will affect overall size and shape. The largest ones that I have in my 72 are about nine inches and who knows how much taller they can get. They've remained this size for about a month now, so I'm feeling pretty confident that they won't get much taller in this environment. This seemingly wide range of max size when fully grown makes them good as a carpeting plant for the foreground of big tall Dutch style tanks and even a good carpenter for the mid and background of certain tanks like my 72, where I want good swimming room in the middle. Chain swords in general also have a really close morphology to Sagittarius species. The broadleaf species that I have here is pretty similar to Sagittarius subtila, with a main difference being color and overall size potential, but that's about it. 
Sag tends to be a little darker green for me, which may or may not be better for the scape, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. I think the contrast of the lighter green in this sword with the darker green Pogo Stamon and the just barely darker Java Fern I have here in my Tetra tank works out pretty well. Chain swords, and most all swords for that matter, will prefer the following water conditions in your aquarium. pH should be kept anywhere from 6 to 7.5, temperature between 70 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit, and an average water hardness anywhere in the 3 to 10 range should be perfect for growing chain swords. But now what about light, CO2, substrate, and adding fertilizers? Lighting requirements for most swords is going to be fairly easy to accomplish. I would classify most of them as needing medium light if you want them to grow at a noticeable rate. Higher lighting conditions paired with CO2 is going to result in these plants growing the fastest, just like pretty much every other plant you have in your tank. We'll go ahead and say that CO2 is optional, but it's recommended for the best results. I have these swords in three of my tanks right now, two of which have pressurized CO2, and the third tank does not have anything added. I can totally tell a difference in the growth, being that the tank without CO2 produces less runners, and the plants are overall just much smaller. For this plant, I'll say that you can take your pick when it comes to substrates, just make sure that whatever you use, it's got some nutrients in it. Skip the plain gravel or sand if you want these plants to thrive. I always use soil in my tanks because in my opinion, it gives the best results no matter what I'm trying to grow. You guys know this, but you can totally grow chain swords pretty well in something like Eco Complete or any other brand. It's, there's no need to be specific in my opinion. Unlike the massive heavy root feeding Amazon swords, I don't seem to have any issues with nitrogen deficiencies or any other types of deficiencies with this plant. But that could be because of the relatively new soil substrate I'm using, but I think it's fair to say that chain swords won't require any root tabs or big doses of liquid for it to stay bright green and healthy, at least in the beginning. Once you have a giant mass of swords, it might be a totally different story. Again, that's going to be based on what substrate type you use. If you're looking to get this plant growing fast and propagating like crazy, you're going to need standard good lighting closer to the high light side of things, CO2 close to or at least 20 ppms, and a nutrient rich substrate, which is probably going to be soil guys. I know that I've been advocating a lot lately for soil, but trust me, it's for a good reason. Like I said, you will be able to grow this plant pretty well without CO2 and just in an inorganic nutrient substrate, but it's not going to be as fast and get as compact and lush as it could. Probably the best feature of this plant is that when you get it under the right set of conditions, it's going to propagate like it's trying to escape from prison. In a matter of just a few days, maybe a week after first planting, you're going to start to notice new plants poking up out of the nearby substrate. You'll start to see a few here and there, and then before you know it, you're going to have a massive patch of swords that's going to be running all around the tank. This super aggressive propagation is definitely awesome at first and will definitely help out your aquascape, but it can totally get to a point where you want it to stop. It sounds crazy, but let me explain. These swords are going to go where they want, when they want. They'll propagate all over your tank regardless of having large rocks and other plants in their way. In the 72 here, I get a few swords popping up out of the S-Repens carpet every few days. Not a big deal, I just pull them out, but if left alone for two or three weeks, I would have a much bigger issue on my hands. You can create and put in your own substrate dividers to help prevent this, but chain swords in particular have a tendency to send runners jumping up out of the substrate which is a pretty cool behavior from a plant nerd standpoint, but not necessarily one from an aquascaping one. It's just one of those things that you have to go along with. Now, runners, as many like to call them, are actually clones of the original plant, a complete identical genetic copy that are often called daughter plants. So let's say that you want to spread your population of chain swords to the opposite side of the tank, and you happen to see a bunch of new daughter plants popping up out of the substrate. Here's my tip. Before you go in and snip off new plants, let them grow up to be about half the size of the fully grown plants around them. Your patience will pay off here, because the more mature the plants are when you snip them off, will result in them growing much faster and propagating themselves quicker once you get them planted. So overall guys, whether or not you decide to get the narrow leaf or the broadleaf version of chain swords, they're just a really awesome plant that are going to help out your aquascape. I think they're a great beginner plant and I can't recommend them enough to someone just starting out. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you like the new format that I'm using. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know the exact moment when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.